It gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Dirk Peter Van Leeuwen. Uh, DP, come on up to the stage. He's Senior Vice President, General Manager of Red Hat for Asia Pacific and Japan. Hey, DP. Thanks, Russ. Thanks for joining me here today. Congratulations. It's great to see you. Machine. Thanks. Thanks. So again, our partnership goes way back, um, and, and I think it's, we don't have to talk about the past. I think there's so much to talk about now and for the future. Um, so I'm interested in your perspectives on a lot of things. Um, we've talked about cloud native development. That's something that really, it's Linux, that's home for Linux, right? Um, and, and then with the new tools and things that are coming out, you know, the next generation of developers is even gonna be that much more productive. Why don't you give us your view on cloud native development and what's happening in the world of Red Hat? Yeah, so a lot of stuff is hap happening in the world of Red Hat, and you've all heard about OpenShift being the platform uh, of choice to put your containerization on, uh, to have it run on, on multi-cloud and hybrid cloud. Uh, the one thing I think that is really important for us, just as much as it is important for you that you still have this phenomenal system Z, is that Linux is still underneath everything. And all these systems and everything we've been doing has been the evolution of Linux. Uh, containers, ultimately, are Linux. Uh, everything that happens in the cloud happens on Linux. So this is a platform, it's, it's an operating system that has evolved over the, over the many, many years that it has been, uh, since it has been launched. It has uh, e uh, exponentially evolved, I, sh I would want to say, because uh, I love to speak about uh, exponential innovation when we talk about open source, and that's due to the nature of how open source is being developed. It is open, everybody can look at it, and everybody can build and develop on it, and therefore it's become more secure, and it has evolved faster than any other oper operating system could have evolved because of all the many eyes and all the many ideas on top of it. That's right, and um, just a few, just a couple quick facts. So of all the mainframe capacity installed around the world, 30%, 3-0, 30% runs Linux today. So it's clearly an important part of the, of the IBM Z franchise with our customers out there around the world. And uh, another interesting stat, of the contributors to Linux, I mean, who knows who, who, knows who the number one contributor to the open source Linux kernel is in the world? Well, of course, it's Red Hat. And the number two contributor is IBM. And IBM Z has again been contributing for more than 20 years. So, you know, we've, we've been in this open game for a long time. And, and as, as DP says, you know, innovation, that's where a lot of the innovation in the world is happening. And so let's, 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 let's also reflect. I mean, Red Hat's uh, been doing this for a long time. But, you know, with Linux One and, and an enterprise level server that can change the game for many important workloads, especially for banks, financial institutions, people in regulated industries that have high degrees of security needs, you know, how, what, how does Red Hat view that set of customers and where they need to go? Yeah, so security has become extremely important. And uh, I mentioned earlier, I get this question on, honestly quite a lot from, from journalists and, and sometimes from customers about, okay, tell me about Linux, it's open source, so is it secure? Uh, the answer really, is if it has to be secure, it has to be open. Because that's the only way you get enough eyes and enough you know, uh, intelligence on the security uh, in, in order to make sure there is no hidden back, back door, there is nothing that you can't really see. So one, once you have a secure open source system, it is super secure. You can't get it more secure. And I'll give you another example of that. The NSA has developed uh, their version of uh, security and actually gave it to Red Hat to open source. We did that many years ago already, almost 10 years ago, and it's now part of every standard Linux distribution. It's called SE Linux, Secure Enhanced Linux. It's the most secure operating system in the world, and obviously it runs very well on Z. Yes, and, and so most secure Linux in the world and running on the most secure hardware platform. And I, I won't name who the competition is in hardware, but you can guess who they are. And if you look at the number of vulnerabilities, whether it's, you know, whether it's through side scanning attacks or other things in that architecture, you have to have a secure operating system, but you also have to have a secure hardware and firmware platform under it. And I think the two of us together, I know, I don't think, we bring that to the marketplace because when you take Red Hat and you run it on Z, it inherits those security characteristics. And that's something very important. You don't have to change your applications at all. You can just raise your security level for the most important workloads that you have, which most of you run in your shops already. 
Um, again, synergy like MAD that we've had in the past, and now some new synergy that, we, that I didn't have in the past. I mean, you had OpenShift, but I didn't have that on the platform. And so now we've made a statement direction around OpenShift, but we're gonna talk a little bit about why OpenShift is so important and, and what's coming and give you a little bit of glimpse of what will be available in a few months' time. And that is that OpenShift on RHEL, on the platform, so on Linux, of course, but also ZOS interacting and, and supporting OpenShift, Ansible, the workflow, the container flow, the automation powered by Red Hat OpenShift and by their other key products brought to both ZOS and to Linux on Z. So you can tell I'm excited about what's coming in the future, but why don't you tell the folks just how important OpenShift is to the Red Hat strategy and what you're seeing out there. Yeah, so OpenShift really uh, delivers what our customers have been asking for for many, many years. It's, it's this one platform that you can containerize on, you can do your, your DevOps on, you can develop your applications, but then you are not locked into any cloud provider. It is a multi-cloud and hybrid cloud solution allowing you to run an application, develop an application, and containerize it and move it across clouds. And I think the exciting part when it comes to Z is that now there is actually a platform that is not a commoditized platform where you really don't know where it goes. Now there's a platform where you can run your containers in a super secure way. And you can actually extend this into your cloud strategy and move your containers where you feel most safe about having them run. And I think this is a really exciting thing about uh, today because everything else is commoditized. And, and this is really, really something different. Yes, and so just thanks, Dirk. So the, the key thing here is there's something that was announced recently in, in ZOS 2.4 called container extensions. So yeah, you heard it right. You can build your containers and you can manage them with OpenShift and they can flow and they can run inside an address space in ZOS because you wanna bring that workload because it's analytics, bring it closer to the data, bring it closer to your transactions. Whatever reason, there's a lot of use cases that we're seeing clients working on. And so this is now a natural way to connect your multi-hybrid cloud systems together is through OpenShift, again, ZOS, and of course, RHEL on the platform as well. So I think it's, it's really an exciting thing. And again, we made a statement of direction by the way it works. It's running in the lab very well today. But as usual, we test the heck out of things so uh, we don't release anything before it's time, but uh, it's coming soon. Now something we haven't actually made a statement of direction on, but the Red Hat and the, and the Z team quickly uh, bonded and uh, demonstrated how this would work internally, and that's Ansible. And I, I don't know if folks know what Ansible is. You wanna give them a little, just an update on Ansible and why that's an important part of your strategy and now the Z strategy? Definitely, Ansible is a uh, clientless automation uh, system allowing you to automate tasks uh, across systems, across everything, IoT, mainframe, servers. Uh, the nice thing about Ansible is it has a, a feature which we call Ansible Tower. Ansible Tower is what I call autonomy bringing autonomy to automation. It's like having a car and all the systems that you have that are doing automation for you, the warning systems and you know, the automatic braking and all these things that you have, but are you capable of taking your hands off the wheel and trusting the automation to take over? That's really where Ansible comes in uh, and helps our customers really you know, optimize uh, what they can do with systems and how they can take away a lot of risks out of the operational side of their business, uh, moving resources away and, and cost away from uh, you know, manual tasks and, and the risk of, of making mistakes and automating everything, including preempting uh, issues and preempting problems that you may get with your system and actually fixing them before they happen. Yeah, so I recently spoke to 10 of the top 50 banks in the world. I, I had them gathered in New York City to do a, a client council that I run and all of them are running Ansible today, but what they didn't realize until I told them was that Z was gonna be part of that. So they actually had Ansible as their strategy for the entire rest of their, um, of their landscape globally, but Z was this island. And they were thrilled to learn that what's gonna come from us, again, wait, just wait and watch, You'll, we'll be saying more about this, is that ZOS and of course RHEL 
on Z will be full participants, equal participants, and happy participants in this key automation strategy. So just a few tidbits of things that aren't truly announced yet, but that are coming and, and we're really proud of. Any, DP, any final thoughts for the audience? No, I think it's very exciting that the, the acquisition of uh, Red Hat by IBM uh, has promised a lot of synergy. I am super impressed with the speed at which IBM has delivered the synergy with the cloud packs and now with uh, the, the Z system and, and how we run and integrate our software on IBM. This is super exciting. And I think the, the, the true beneficiary of all of this is the customer.